Hello everyone, we're back with another tax resource help video. My last couple of videos had some great feedback and we got some great questions from some of the viewers. Also, some of my subscribers reached out and asked if I could go in a little bit deeper into some of these subjects. So I thought I would take this chance to do a little Q&A with everyone, reading off of some of the questions I've gotten in previous videos and trying to answer them here. So some of this information you may have already heard or known from previous videos. Some of this information may be brand new. I know for a fact there's going to be in information in this video that no one really knows because I'm going to answer one question in particular that's going to give a little insight into my knowledge about the tax return filing system. This is going to lead me to the first question or first series of questions asked by a few viewers. How do you know about how all of this works and why should we believe you? Good question. About nine years ago, when I was trying to break into the radio business, I was trying to pitch stories to a local news radio station. At the time, I was going through an audit and a review myself from previous year tax return, and it made me real interested in, in trying to cover the inner workings of the IRS because going through the process was extremely frustrating, and I knew that probably thousands of other people were going through the same thing. Through that reporting and really deep, deep, deep diving into the e-file system of the IRS tax preparer software, interviewing the programmers that actually worked on the e-file system itself. I learned a lot, and when the radio editor told me that it wasn't good enough material for air, I started covering it myself and putting videos up on YouTube. When I publish my videos, they are always valid and true for the time that I've published them, and more often than not, still true even years later. So you can go back to videos I made four, five, six years ago, seven years ago even, and they'll still be true today, a lot of the things I've said in those videos. Obviously, sometimes different updates are made within the IRS system, but typically all the information I post will be true basically forever until they decide to get rid of the modernized e-file system that they've currently been using since the early 2000s. There's information that I know from speaking to program developers and obtaining the actual developing manual and knowing all the codes listed in the in the manual. It's over 100 pages. There is a reduced size modern e-file manual that you can actually obtain online. It's about half the size of the one I got from the employee, and a lot of it is redacted. Mine is not redacted, so I know a lot of information that even the customer service rep that you would talk to on the phone at the IRS wouldn't know. The next common question is, I have a 570 code and or a 971 code on my transcript. What does this mean? A 570 code means that there is a hold or a freeze on the refund that you're expecting. This is typically because you are under review and there is someone within the review department going over the return to make sure it's accurate. I can explain more about that throughout another question. The 971 code is a noticed issue code. Sometimes that happens in conjunction with a 571 code. And what that means is they're mailing you a letter to let you know why the refund is on hold. Sometimes there won't be a 971 code with the 570. In those cases, often the 570 code will clear up a lot quicker. When the 570 code clears, it will be followed by the transcript will update with a 571, which releases that freeze. The next question is, after my transcripts were finally available, I see that my cycle code is a weekly 05 cycle code. How do they determine which tax returns get processed in the once a week batches? I hope you brought your scuba gear because I am about to take you on a very deep dive into the world of tax return processing. So you have the misfortune of having the resemblance of a certain senator named Mitch and you and your new girlfriend Hillary have just finished your binge of the Golden Girls. You've now sat down with your laptops and started to file your taxes. You see, this year's a little bit different for you two. In previous years, you always had a married filing jointly tax return with your former spouses. Hillary used to file a tax return with her husband, Bill, and you used to file your tax return with your ex-wife, Elaine. So you log into TurboTax, fill out those forms, and e-file them off into the abyss. Within a couple days, you get a notification from TurboTax that your return was accepted. You feel great! You see, these divorces have cost you tons of money, and you are really relying on that refund. But deep in the depths of the internet, there is a system with an algorithm programmed to find inconsistencies 
in people's tax returns year over year. Unfortunately for you, that system has pegged you, Mitch, as perhaps making a mistake because it sees that in previous years you had a married filing joint return and this year you're filing single. So instead of your return being processed within a week and a half like it always has in the 185 years that you've been alive, you find yourself staring at that computer screen night after night, feverishly checking where's my refund for some sort of update. So what are your options? Well, you can call the IRS and talk to a customer service representative who really can't see what's going on with your return. Pretty much all they're allowed to tell you is, yes sir, we have your return and it's processing. Give us 21 days. You could go to your local IRS office, protest and demand they process your return immediately, but we all know that won't do much good. Or you could choose to do the final and best option, log on to YouTube, check out the DS Entertainment Network YouTube videos where you'll learn quickly that that sudden change in your filing status has caused a flag in the system which has moved you from the daily processor that you used to be into the weekly batch processing. From those videos, and specifically this Q&A, you will learn that even some of the smallest changes to your return, whether it be filing status, a change of jobs, going on unemployment, having a baby and claiming a new dependent, itemizing your deductions, or being self-employed, are all things that can cause a return to get pushed into weekly batch processing. The system's algorithm automatically flags those returns that it deems high risk of having any mistakes. These changes in people's status qualify as high risk. Pushing those high risk category returns into weekly batch processing allows the system time to match up what they're reporting with what's on file with employers, 1099 issuers, state departments of revenue, state unemployment offices, etc, etc. Unfortunately, once you've been pushed into weekly batch processing, you will then be pushed into weekly batch processing every year, which means every year when you file your returns, you will be only updating and processing on Fridays and getting your direct deposit of refunds on Wednesdays. There is the rare example of people saying that they were suddenly switched from weekly to daily, but I've yet to see any proof from those people that they were actually switched to being daily or that they were ever weekly in the first place. It is possible to be switched from daily to weekly, but very unlikely to be switched from weekly to daily. Anyway, I hope you all process soon, you get your money, and you go out and you make it rain. Have a good week, everybody.